it to me, baby. Ends of the game. Animously sends our refilm. Re back to the. I did the one thing. Right was a genetic. Luckily, home just. But the girl. Understandable answers and Wesker a little Games almost shit on Alice since our to bring our for screen those movies got right was a genetically enhanced Jesus all right so the show isn't exactly clear on this but I think Billy was given some kind of enhanced strength. So harder. I think both of them may have been given above average intelligence, which explain my genius scientist while not doing who gets her alone. Side, it works, but on the negative side, the zombie gets loose and kills her assistant, who was revealed to be pregnant like four or so minutes ago. Now, I think this could have been a pretty interesting plot point. Like, maybe her and her family gets kicked off the boat or something, but instead, it goes absolutely nowhere, because right when she's about to face her idiotic actions, Umbrella shows up. I might be skipping ahead here a little bit, but if you were hoping there would be some kind of a resolution to oh. this event, the show oh, took the so to set up, yeah, it's not mm -hmm. gonna happen. After
after this, it is never brought up again, and the show acts like it didn't happen. So I guess my only question is, why? All right, back to Umbrella. So it turns out Billy faked the whole loving sister act and wrap her in the zombie head and find the university. And to be honest, I'm not sure why they care about these guys. Apparently, the company is afraid of them. They should be. They care about their PR at this point. Yeah, I was gonna say the world's Russia over. Is essentially a military state. They're in control of everything, and no one can do anything without their say so. We cut back to the past where Wesker is being held at Umbrella, and we are introduced to literally the most stupid and flat out comical storyline ever seen in any piece of Resident Evil media. And if you know this series, you know how lofty a claim that is. All right, are you ready for this? All right, so Albert Wesker, the one we know in the show so far, is actually just a clone of the real Wesker, aka the Albert Wesker from the video games. And the Nika Wesker we are more familiar with, again, video game Wesker, cloned himself in order to get some work done on. What I think about it, I don't really say what he was Deadpan delivery. Writing mesh up very well. Apparently, the original Wesker gave his clones rapid aging, which is what he's been doing with his daughter's Apparently, he did to them allows their blood to counteract this. Present and Jade's transfer. Knowing this is definitely Jade tells her daughter to grab a simple bag for the one her dad and get off the ship. Then Jade gets taken to meet up with her sister. We find out that Bill Brain and can control her with an iPad. Not even gonna touch on that. So it's starting to look like curtains for Jade, but little does Umbrella know she had a trap for the zombie variant. They made a batch of pheromones to both attract him without breaks open a vial of the former. Every dead head in the trike shows up, giving us a pretty okay scene where they overtake the camp. <laughs> At the same time, we find out he has a nuclear option. And I'm sorry, but a monster you fight in RE2 was an alligator, and most definitely could not be, because it would have died a long time ago being drug around in salt water. My fellow Floridians immediately scream this at their TV. Very last, everything comes to a head. Apparently, Evelyn has been drugging her wife with a prototype drug they've been working on, which works a little too well, making her numb to everything except for a fairly lucid sort of happiness. The girls try to get away from an umbrella bug, but only Jade makes it, and she heads straight to the hacker kid's house, which I neglected to mention is the son of Evelyn because it doesn't matter. 
in any way. She tells him what's going on, and he agrees to help her break into the facility to get Okay, job taking down what looks like thousands of zombies. Realizes she probably came back to the past and here. They're fine. Family is important, and when she meets up with her ride, she talks to them. Really, for some reason, that he was bit, and curing the T virus in return for his family takes some time and introduces him to the Switching back again, we get another look at the events in the first game, and getting messed up by the crocodile she released, and he gets to find her daughter alone. The aforementioned reptile catches up with her first, though, and for some reason, Billy Glass. After a no joke, you just found a sad scene for me. I'm like, sure, blow him up when he's after her trying to kill you. He catches up with her daughter, but Umbrella isn't far behind. Kill her sister. Do you get him? Like I'm gonna get him an item too. Got... Wesker says, you mean something? It's, well, cool or not, it gets the javelin manages to get to safety, and there's a shot setting up the tyrant surviving the blast. He goes and goes, hop into a car, and in the middle of Wesker. Show's defense, they do make mention that the zombies doesn't make any sense because Jay Holmes went out of the water where he made the zoo for two years. It's a very loose day, so that really just wasn't a fan of how the zombies were the chat. I said it. The story. The whole thing could have easily went on without. Of course, all the retconning wasn't in full from a fan. Perspective, but I knew that would be the case going in. Like I've said many times before, I 
playing with canon was sort of sold to me as the series seems like these people understood how dark wanted to make good on a sort of cinematic apology but every single time they fall into the same exact pitfalls they assume the full resident evil story isn't good enough so they write their own each and every attempt turning into an absolute mess so was i disappointed in this series of course which is actually kind of surprising because i was already prepared for it to be garbage Let's just put everything else to the side and focus on one thing. This show has Lance Reddick playing clones of himself. A lot of them. Who paid that idea? I mean, when people criticize our re-games, it's usually... ...on how... To be fair, it is. If you're rewriting a whole new story, why make it just as nonsensical but kind of vaguely different? Right, basically. Just how poorly thought out this all was. storyline if it's at least written well or interesting. This show stumbles on all the elementary stuff. For example, their goal seems just this strong spirit that triumphs even when all of these terrible things happen to her. She has a hand in causing nearly every... I mean, let's look back on it all. Jade attacked the bully, which set into motion her sister finding out about the animal testing, which is what led to her getting in her arms, what caused the zombies to chase her, and that's Rappers, in the post she was also explosion. She got the zombie and then decided to dangerous experiment with her. Crippled her hubby. She is with all the changes to the story. You know, late drama will probably have the same effect. And I think that explains this show perfectly. Resident Evil is essentially a TV show that was made for no one. The fan base of its source material are way too old to be watching teenagers gossip about each other, and people looking for something like The Walking Dead aren't going to like how little zombies or the apocalypse are taking place. So if you can help it, don't waste your time watching Resident Evil. At the very best, you'll be left with a bunch of likely isn't coming. And I think that's a good thing. I think we can all agree that this shot. He definitely doesn't need to be rewarded with more money. And, well, I don't think I can say much else. This is a bad show. Not so bad it's bad enough to be boring. Now, if it's me, I I hope to see all of you guys again next time. If I don't, thank you very much for watching the Resident Evil Retrospective.
do not have them. Categorically untrue. UK royalties, sound and publishing, for all tribes in this And for everything. It's all, and we had just written a playlist. If you're unfamiliar with what those things are, Spotify, Apple, or any other streaming service have you created or currently own, and they choose who they place it. They usually have hundreds of thousands, if not millions of followers. And the placement on just one of the playlist can accumulate millions and millions of dreams for us all. The fact that they would effectively oh, my God, baby. two artists made me more intrigued to look into how playlists work, and I went down a rabbit hole that took me far away from 692. <laughs> finessing, and the biggest one being how much of a market there was for music that had nothing to do with mainstream artists. It started off like this. I wanted to know how many independent artists were getting slots on editorial playlisting. Big editorial playlists. So I had a friend of mine write up some code. You see, every playlist has a number of slots. For instance, Rap Caviar, one of Spotify's biggest playlists with over 14 million followers, and the biggest hip-hop playlist, has 50 slots on it. Everyone is fighting to get a slot, if not multiple, on this playlist, if they are rappers or represent rappers. And if you look at the bottom of any album or single, there will be credits and ownership for who distributed the song and who has rights to the song. What I asked him to do was write some code that would give us the following information. Skin in through every single editorial sponsor. I only wanted to get Dismiss any place that has this is list us the songs and artists from said label that were put on these playlists. We ran this for a month from October 24th to November 21st, recording the results for each week. And the results were quite shocking. On October 24th of 2020, coming in at number one, we had Columbia Records with 566 playlist positions. Not a surprise. Columbia Records has some of the biggest artists in the world, and in 2020, they had a ton of hit songs. In the top 10, you also see familiar companies like Atlantic Records, Warner Records, RCA, big names we all recognize. But at number two is what made me scratch my head at What the hell is Fireplay Entertainment? And why do they have 385 famous positions? The second most ahead of some of the biggest record in the world. The data could come in. On November 8th, Firefly was number 2 again, with 358 players. November 15th, they fell just a little bit down to number 3 and 309 players' positions. And on November 21st, they would fall to number 4 with 318 players' positions. Still in the top 5 representatives in the whole world when it came to editorial players' spots, ahead of big players in the game such as Interscope, Epic, Universal. Apple, and many others. I needed to find out what Firefly was, who was a part of why they were doing so many things.
What's up, baby? What's up? Fuck! Hold on, hold on. I'm in uh, the platform thing. Fuck, guys. One second. Shut up, man. Why? Spotify instructing for 
I'm just too good. That's number two. I gotta take this real quick. Be right back.
Hey. That's what Five spot tracks. Hey, five hundred thousand. The questions that are likely running through your mind are why would Spotify do something like this? What do they have to benefit from it? Well, keep in mind this was twenty six. What the fuck was I doing, man? I Thank you. Damn, I was about to be second place in that fight. This has probably been going on since 2014 or 15. The future of streaming was shaky from the perspective of record labels. Streaming only made up for revenue for the music industry in 2016, which pales in comparison to nearly 17 billion in revenue streaming generated for the music industry in 2021, nearly four times over. And the future was also shaky with record labels. What if they pulled their catalogs? There was licensing negotiations going on. What if their monetary demands from Spotify to allow them to keep their music streaming in their library was too high? They would sensibly need something to offset that. Don't put all your eggs in one basket type of thing. Especially the time where Spotify was out of contract with major labels, Sony, Warner, and Universal, for the 55% revenue share they paid to music rights. An example of this was when Spotify decided to blackmail the hair. It's actually really fucking crazy. We'll dive deeper into this topic in the future. But you remember in 2016, the era where rappers and musicians were constantly getting exclusive releases on platforms like Tidal, Apple, or Spotify, and how that suddenly, one day, poof, just ended. Well, Spotify, while in negotiations, decided to show how much power they will. And when Katy Perry released her song Rise, we'd find out. It was written with the Olympics in mind, and it was set to be the Olympic song. It wouldn't be released on Spotify until a week after it had been on iTunes and Apple Music. It debuted at number 11 on the Hot 100, but it plummeted soon after, despite being featured consistently through NBC's coverage of the Olympics. A better sync deal than that. Rise the editorial playlist until a month after it was released. And it was on a 400 playlist at the time called Spotify Pops Rising for a song that had just flopped a month after and by a superstar Katy Perry nonetheless. Putting it on Pops Rising was more so just making a statement. The single flopped. This is possibly where the whole fake artist thing started. This is my personal belief. Spotify saw what people were searching for on the platform. They saw this massive rise in people looking for mood music, whether it was soothing baby music, bright noise, music, national hardware, 
Sleep to study music keyword. So they began time pressure from feels and potentially. There was only one problem. All these in fifty if all two so artists to label them. But it's far from. You have heard of it. Data that I we're in the top ten record labels. With They're based in Sweden. Basically. Monthly fee to music library to use their music for artists, and they pay them up for whatever they want with it. Well, there was a rumor that. Was that a record executive was upset and that Swedish duo music for different. This is for people investigating this one. What if mission epidemic sound create these songs for guarantee on these playlists that both of them their money. Money. Spotify could a hundred percent is given to created. So, and co founder of the sound, who started off as. It is correct that some list sound the music that they produce. These are certainly fake artists. That term is offensive. These are professors. as is often the case with songs. Stream pop bags. So those are streams. While some prefer to use making music for only years, are generating 10 billion views per month on YouTube and Facebook. Consequently, we receive many available via streaming platforms. 12 months ago, Music via spot. This is a form for complete. 
them and gives them the right. Too nice. Text, man. Strikes are.